Welcome back to Computer Networks. And today we're having a look at uh, the first parts of network architecture uh, and the need for network architecture. So we talked uh, in the previous video about uh, some of the things around abstraction and the changing nature of networks and being able to manage them effectively. Uh, and so when we're designing a network, we really need to take this into account because one of the, the key things that we actually see with the a very high rate of feature velocity and technological advancement at the moment uh, is that the way we use a network is evolving very rapidly and so we need a network uh, design a network architecture that is flexible enough to accommodate this kind of change uh, without driving the people who are trying to maintain it completely bonkers uh, and that you're know, resulting in the need to uh, recreate and reinvent things all the time in order to support that so one of the, the key ways that this is done is by having a layered network design so that any one particular layer uh, can actually be replaced with a better version uh, of that layer without affecting the higher or lower la uh, layers in the network. So there's a, a whole bunch of different uh, network layered approaches that you can use. Two very common ones are the OSI seven layer model and the internet uh, five layer model. Uh, and they're both covered in the textbook and you need to, to have a look at those. We won't be going over those in full detail uh, in this video. Uh, but we will just talk about the general idea of having a, a layered network. And we've, again, we touched on this earlier in a couple of the earlier videos. Um, at the lowest layer, you're going to have the hardware, which is actually conveying uh, communications between two nodes over a link. And this might be a point to point link or a point to multi point link. Uh, but importantly, um, it's not able, to, like it doesn't know about the broad structure of the network. So if two hosts are not directly connected by the link, uh, they won't be connected. Uh, but this lets us really narrow down uh, what we need to implement uh, in that lowest layer to be the you know, transfer of bits, bytes, packets, messages, depending on the, the kind of network that's being designed between two neighboring nodes on the network. The next level up then is actually having the host to host connectivity. How can we deliver communications between arbitrary pairs of hosts, arbitrary nodes on the network that might be uh, indirectly connected via many links, in fact, uh, to get from end to end. So that allows us to, to move data between any pair of computers. Uh, then on top of that, we need to have different applications running on those computers able to communicate with each other on that computer and uh, with applications, processes, programs on other computers. So we have this idea of process to process uh, communications channel. And then finally, we have the actual applications uh, themselves that are running on top of that and accessing only the process to process communications channel uh, services. And of course, those then only use the host to host connectivity and the host to host connectivity only uses the hardware. So each layer doesn't need to know about anything other than the interface that the layer below it takes um, or the layer above it uh, expects to receive in return as well. And so this dramatically simplifies things. We can swap the hardware out without having to change an application. We can change the host to host connectivity potentially as well. Um, so this is you know, how IPv6 has been implemented over time. We didn't need to change the URLs that we use uh, because we have uh, a host to host connectivity mechanism for doing the host name to IPv4 or IPv6 resolution at the lower level. Uh, and so again, th this saves tremendous effort and introduces great flexibility and longevity into a network design by being able to change out uh, these things in the different layers. Um, one of the other things that you can actually find is that some layered models actually at particular layers have more than one implementation available. Uh, so again, if we look at IPv4, IPv6, um, we actually see that at the host to host uh, kind of layer, there's two different options. And you uh, frequently have at the higher level as well. We spoke about this a little bit before in terms of video conferencing in the, in the previous video. You might have a message stream. So for the video stream might go through a message stream and it might even have multiple options for reliable and unreliable uh, versus having a request reply channel. Uh, and so these are two different implementation, two different implementations at that layer of different services. And this is totally fine. It's actually, it's the strength of the network to have 
uh, you know, appropriate solutions at a particular layer. But again, each of those solutions fits into the layers above it and below it in a standardized manner, which greatly simplifies uh, the implementation of these different things. So again, uh, it helps to provide that kind of mechanism. So again, we'll come back to this idea of layers repeatedly through the, um, uh, the course, and it's perhaps one of the most important uh, you know, theoretical uh, perspectives on computer networks is that they actually almost always are layered in their design to get these kinds of benefits and to make them much more maintainable uh, and implementable and manageable. So again, uh, any questions, pop them in the comments below uh, and we'll try and respond and we'll see you next time.